Grubby. What you doing, bub? Hunter. Hey. What you doing, buddy? Come here. Hey, bud. What you doing? Mom's got this ugly bow on you. I took all the clamps off, guys, so moment of truth. Let's see. I definitely got a little bit of spring back. I can already tell because it hit this block and it was tight up against there. But let's see how much more it has. Not a little bit. The paper is doing its job. It didn't stick to the table. I'm going to have to tape, put the paper on here every time. Alright, I'm going to clean the paper off of it. See what it looks like. Oh, I thought there might be gaps in the back. I was worried about that. Actually, it's pretty tight. Might be a little bit of areas, but not bad. I was afraid the clamps weren't clamping at the right angle, so that would uh, possibly leave a gap, but I don't see too much gappage at all. Nothing really. I'll be able to run this through the, maybe I can run this through the planer and uh, get it planed down a little bit. Take a little bit at a time and see how she looks. Maybe I'll scrape some of this glue off first, though. Not bad. Okay, guys, so I scraped off a lot of the glue, the heavier glue. I'm going to brush it off and run it through the planer. I'm going to have to kind of, you know, sweep, sweep it as it runs through the planer, kind of hold it at an angle. So that ought to be interesting. I've never planed a curved piece of wood like this, but it's inch and three quarters. So by the time I get it down, it's probably going to be close to inch and a half, which is fine. Well guys, I'm pretty happy with it. It came down to inch and a half thick, so I got it down where I wanted it. Looks uh, pretty good. So I think that'll do the job. Pretty cool. I only got to make a bunch more of them now. <laughs> okay, guys. I modified my jig here. I uh, put these blocks on here so that my clamps are going to come out and the knobs here are going to be past the table. Um, if you watched part eight, I had a heck of a time during the glue up with the bar clamps because I thought I could clamp them up here. And when I put the clamp on there in the middle of the glue up, my handle, as I turned it, would hit the table. So I had to reach back here and try to hook it onto here, which didn't work that good. But And it cost me a little time, which when you're gluing up, time is of the essence. So um, I think this can be a lot better. 
I got all my clamps sitting right here, ready to go. I got my strips over here. These are the ones I'm gonna be using for this glue up. This one here, I'm gonna keep them kind of in the order they were sawed, just to see if it looks a little better. Won't look so striped. And uh, that's it, I'm gonna glue this sucker up. And I'll video, we'll see if it goes any better than uh, the last one, I hope so. Cause I gotta make quite a few of these things depending on how I do the roof. Uh, I'm thinking about either doing five of them and then put purlings between them. So it'd be every four foot or doing them on two foot centers, which would require double that. So, and then skip the purlings, but we'll see. I haven't decided how strong this will be. Might get some, uh, get some second opinions on that, on uh, how I should space these rafters. Here we go. Another thing I did here, guys, is I laid out all my slats, how they're gonna be in the beam. And I drew a line down the middle here. That way when I'm gluing up, I can line this line up with my middle clamp. And uh, that'll make things easier as I'm laying this out of where this needs to be. Just a little trick that I learned from the first glue up. Failed attempts, or near failed attempts. <laughs> Okay guys, so I think that clamp up went much nicer. And it even looks a lot neater here with all the clamps. With my blocks that I put in, helped a lot. Um, things that went right, um, I think it was a lot smoother than yesterday. And I think I probably got a better joint here. I gotta clamp that, stand by. Sorry about that guys, I just threw a clamp on the end of here. Um, even though this is going to get sawed off, I didn't want a little uh, unglued areas that would start to pull and try to delaminate. Even though it's clamped back here where I'm going to be cutting it off pretty much. But uh, yeah, things that went right, like I said, it was smoother, much easier clamping with the blocks I put on there. Um, yeah, went pretty good. Uh, one thing that went wrong is I snapped a board right here. This board snapped. And it looks like it snapped right on a... Right there. There's a little bug hole right there. Snapped right on that bug hole. That's a, probably a powder post beetle hole. Because uh, my buddy Greg had some powder post beetles in his shop where I got this wood, but he he uh, was able to get rid of most of them. But that one had a hole in it right there. It broke on the powder post beetle hole. I did have a few more with those little holes in them, but they didn't crack. Um, so I had to grab an extra stick from my other pile, this pile over here, which is fine. But they weren't all cut 
that one wasn't cut off the same piece of wood, but that don't matter. Um, that's it. Yeah, went pretty good. I got good squeeze out on there, I think. All over the place. Looks real good. Everything looks pretty tight. So, uh, I gotta let it dry. Overnight, again, 24 hours. That's the pain. I can only make one of these a day. And uh, depending on how many I need, it's going to be a long time here. But we'll get them done. Just keep plugging away. Okay, guys. So um, just a little tip if you ever make these bent laminations for a project. Um, I've been pre-bending. Like, I'll glue up my uh, arch, and then I'll stick all my pieces for the next day i'll put them right there beside it i just screwed a couple blocks in here and i just give them like a pre-bend which actually takes a lot of the stress out of them and it makes it way easier to glue up so i'll just uh these are just sitting in here so i just take them you know i'll just pop them out of there like i popped this one out already and you can see it's relaxed it's already already bent part the way so it just makes it a lot easier when you're trying to glue this stuff up to have it you know pre-bent a little bit you can see the arch already as i take these out so they were sitting from yesterday because i glue these up i'm doing one a day and uh you know I, I wait 24 hours before i pull it out so after i glued that up i put this one in the in my little jig here i just put a couple blocks of wood in here it's not to the exact arch of the, you know, this jig here, but it just gives it, just takes the stress out of it is all. Just wanted to show you that. Definitely helps out a lot. Makes the glue up a lot easier. Trying to get everything into this form without breaking. Because I was breaking some of these slats where these knots are. So I'm hoping I can uh, get this one in there without it breaking because it does have that knot. It's got a knot here too, so... I'm hoping by pre-bending that, I can get this one in there. I have um, been successful with a few, like this one has a knot here and it didn't break, so yesterday when I did this one. But that I pre-bent these too, so as I glued this up yesterday, it was much easier than the prior two that I'd done. Okay guys, so I got some rafters all cut here. I got nine of them made. They're pretty good. There's a little bit of variance in the, in the size, but not much. If you ever do this, run these strips through the planer and you'll have a little more accuracy. I mean, it's good enough for framing the roof, but there is a little tiny bit of difference in each one in the thickness of it. But well, it'll work fine. They're on every 32 inches and there's gonna be a purling on them anyways, but there's nine of them and I got one in the jig here. So that's number 10. And then I actually gotta build a couple of Eve plates, which are just gonna be like an inch and a half bigger than these because my purling's gonna go on there like that. And then uh, I'm gonna need my fascia board to be an inch and a half bigger this way. So it's going to be an inch and a half up, so the arc will be a little different. Well, there they are. A lot of work, let me tell you. A lot of work. For, doesn't look like it, but definitely a lot of work. And uh, this is the last one glued up, except for my, like I said, i got to build those plates. And they're going to be made out of treated wood, because I'm not sure if I'll just paint them, leave them treated and paint them, instead of trying to wrap it with metal at this arc. That, that would be a complete pain to wrap metal at this arc. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But they're going to be treated. They'll be outside the um, insulation envelope. Be basically your fascia board. 
This is what you're gonna look like, guys. I'm using a pocket hole drill, and I'm drilling down at an angle like that. And then I'm taking this drill here and just cleaning the hole out better. And then I'm just running uh, three inch deck screws right down in there. And then I got some uh, clips we're gonna use, some hurricane tie clips. And I'm gonna stick on there. I'll show you that in a minute, but that's kind of what she's gonna look like. Every 32 inches, I'm gonna put these on here all the way down the trailer on this top plate it's going to be the double top plate of the wall and i could stand my walls up and basically screw this into my wall as a double top plate so i'm going to build the roof before the walls that's the game plan <laughs> Okay guys, so I got all the bows built, except the end ones that are gonna be treated. And I got them all hooked in. Got all my little uh, brackets in there. And uh, this is just gonna put some, the purlings on now. So that's how the purlings are gonna sit. These are 32 inches on center, these bows. Between here is 32 inches. So I marked my top plate. I just got to slide these in place and screw them down. I'm going to pilot drill them. I'm going to screw through the inch and a half purling down into the bow with a three inch um, deck screw. And uh, right here, the star head deck screw. Because those ones don't strip. I got the coating on them. And I'm going to pilot drill, like I said. That way I don't end up splitting this um, ash, these bows. I'm gonna pilot drill all the holes. I'll probably put two per spot, bing, bing, two there, two there, two there, all the way down. I'm gonna put these purlings on 18 inch centers. So there'll be one there, and then there'll be one about here, 18 inches away, and then another one. And then I'm gonna have a two by two down here with a two by six fascia plate. I'm gonna Rip the two by six at an angle like that. Um, these are super, super strong. I mean, they are like rock solid with these brackets on here and with these uh, pocket screws. I kind of use the pocket screw drill to drill them. And I'll tell you what, these are strong. I probably could have spanned them a little farther, but I think I, I'm glad I did it like this. I don't think I'm going to have to worry about anything with this trailer can be super strong and they're fairly light those bows are not very heavy because they're only three and a half inches tall an inch and a half wide so they don't weigh much more than a two by four but they're so much stronger with that arch in them 
and uh, being made out of uh, hardwood like that with the glue laminations, they're just rock solid. So I'm gonna put my uh, purlins on. I'll try to get some video footage for you guys and I'll uh, go from there. left them long at the end we're gonna put some luan on here me and terry and uh we're gonna i'm just gonna cut these off i just left them long i went 16 and a 12 and a 16 so i staggered my joints that's what she looks like we're gonna put a two by two down here which is gonna catch that luan because if you measure from the top of here middle of that down to Right to about here is going to be four feet. So I'm just going to put a two by two right there to land that Luan on. And that Luan is going to bend to the shape of the roof. And then I'm going to be able to spray foam to the Luan from underneath. We're going to flip this thing over. And that's what we're going to do. That's what she looks like. There's underneath. Pretty cool.
Okay guys, so I'm gonna give you one last look at this before I uh, put my Luan strips in there. So that's what we got. We got a two by six here. It's cut in an angle. Two by four here. This two by four here, I actually screwed into the top of the trailer so that it wouldn't move, but I just unscrewed it. So I'm thinking when I flip this thing over, I'm gonna have to measure make sure we didn't spring out a little bit so um, just from weight so when I tip it up I'm gonna have to check that because before they spray foam I want to make sure this thing is uh, the right width here now that I've unscrewed it from the trailer deck it's gonna have a tendency to kind of want to push out you know a little bit that way and that way just from the weight sitting on it. But once it's spray foam, if I get it to the right spot, it's not gonna move, it's gonna lock it right together. So um, that's what we're doing. I ripped down these pieces of uh, glue on them and nail them on there quick. But I had to unscrew this from the trailer where I had it screwed because I can't get my screw driver down in once I put these on there and I had it screwed right down through here. You can see, right? I just pulled that screw out. That was right down into the stud of the trailer. So, closing it up. And then uh, Kyle's coming over to look at it tonight. Um, Kyle and Son spray foam and see what he thinks about spraying this thing. Get a day, figure it out, and I'm gonna flip this thing over. I'm not sure how heavy it is. It's probably pretty heavy by now. Okay guys, this is where we're at. We got my roof all on there. All my uh, little thin board here, Luan, it's all on. Pretty much could be spray foamed. I talked to uh, Kyle, my spray foam guy about it. And we're gonna take this thing out and flip it over. Like clean it up, take it off the trailer, and we're going to spray foam it. And it's kind of a shame, but you're not going to see these uh, these bows. It's all going to get filled with spray foam right to here. So I'm going to have that larch on the inside of here. But the spray foam is going to go. The reason I did it like this, guys, is because this will all get filled with spray foam. This will get filled with spray foam. So we're going to do about four inches thick. This is four and a half from here to here. It's going to be four inches so just about to here, he's gonna fill it right full of spray foam. So that's gonna eliminate most of your thermal bridging, which is actually where the um, heat will go right through the wood because you don't have the insulation. So this will stop thermal bridging. Only thermal bridging you'll have is right here, this little area. On each stud, there'll be some thermal bridging, but that's gonna be a much better insulation than if we just filled it full without the purlings on there. So that's why we did it that way. And then you got this detail down in here that'll get filled with foam. And around this two by two here, it's all gonna be filled with foam, this whole area right in here. That looks like this. You can see that'll all be filled with foam. So that's a, be like a band joist on a house, like your rim joist. So that won't lose any heat there. And you, won't get any like icicles or anything on the edges if you're doing some winter camping here. So this thing's for extreme temperatures, this build. That's why I'm insulating it so good because it's a hunting camp and it's gonna be cold. So I just wanted to show you that's where we're at. 
that's pretty much the end of this video guys thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed it um it was kind of cool it's been a lot of fun um the next video i'll get will be uh probably when kyle spray foams this next week so i'll finish this one up and uh make sure you subscribe guys if you aren't subscribed to keep watching this build check out my channel if you haven't already if you subscribers thanks for the support i really appreciate it and uh, catch you on the next one, guys. Thanks.